Hey everybody, Mr. Harvey here. First chapter, first lecture, AP European History. I am super pumped. This is going to be an epic year. I'm really excited. Um, let's get started. All right, so um, before we get started with um, the content, I want to talk a, a little bit uh, and just really quickly about lecture and the importance of lecture. Um, Lecture is a main component of this class. We have 22 chapters, and I'm going to lecture on each and every one of those chapters. Um, lecture is really important because this is one of the uh, main, this is the main way that I'm really going to break uh, the history down, our content down, for us to be using in our SAQs, uh, um, LEQs, and DBQs. Uh, for us to really uh, kind of be discussing. So this is where uh, I'm really going to deliver a lot of the content and help us kind of break down what's going on in European history. Um, so it's really important uh, that you don't get behind on these lectures. These lectures are vital, really, really important. Um, let's talk about taking notes during these lectures. There are many different types of learners, auditory learners, visual learners, okay? Your lecture notes are your own. I never grade them. But they are, but it is important to take some type of notes when I lecture because in March, in April, we are going to be taking our class notes with our reading notes. And reading notes are another story. I'll talk about that when, uh, when I introduce the class. But um, class notes, we're going to be taking our notes and helping uh, create study guides. It's going to help us review, which is really important. We have tons of history to go over, tons of people, places, events. Um, the notes are going to be really, really important for us to not only study for your exams that are going to be coming up, but the ultimate exam, the AP exam that's going to be happening in May. So, so notes, uh, taking some type of class notes are important. Now, what, how, you're, how you take notes is up to you. I never grade these. I have had some people who do bullet points, some people do Roman numerals. Uh, I had some people, uh, you know, draw pictures. It's... However you want to organize your notes, you organize your notes that way. But it is important to have to take notes um, because they're going to be so helpful for us in reviewing for the AP exam, okay? Now, also, when I lecture, ladies and gentlemen, it's really important that you not just write down everything on the slide. That, that's not going to be the most important part. I, I, I'm, very, I'm a very detail-oriented person. You all will uh, know that as um, and get to know that as we kind of go throughout this year. Um, but... Pay attention to the main ideas that I'm talking about. Big picture items. Okay, that's where the focus needs to be on. And you all will kind of, we'll get into a rhythm of that as we get through these first opening chapters. Okay? All right. Let's get started and let's talk about chapter one, um, the late medieval period, late middle ages of Europe. Um, now, when I say middle ages, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm talking about the period that's, that's going to be starting at the end of the Roman Empire. Uh, all the way to the Renaissance. Now, chapter one, ladies and gentlemen, in this late medieval middle age period is actually not going to be on your AP exam. It's not on your AP exam at all. Um, but chapter two, the Renaissance is. And it, it's really helpful for us to understand the Renaissance, the changes of the Renaissance, the causes, the effects of the Renaissance, and what goes down in the Renaissance. It really helps us understand the Renaissance if we kind of take a look at Europe before that. And that's one of the reasons why we're, we're, we're starting here, even though it's not on your AP exam. Okay? So we're going to be discussing the, the Middle Ages, medieval time period. Okay? Um, and the, the uh, kind of the very end of this time period. Um, now, it's really important for us to kind of get an idea of the Middle Ages and medieval Europe. What was it like? Kind of what, 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 what was this time period? And uh, I'm going to be discussing this through this chapter, but, you know, I briefly want to introduce it. Medieval Europe is going to be, and we're going to see it change dramatically in the Renaissance. Medieval Europe was characterized by some of the following um, characteristics. One, it was a feudal society. And we're going to see that change in, in the Renaissance when we start to see some powerful monarchies and powerful new nation states. We're going to start to see some really powerful figures like Queen Elizabeth, uh, powerful nations like Spain. Um, uh, England, France, um, that necessarily didn't exist in medieval Europe. It was a very decentralized society, economically, socially, and politically. And what I, I'm going to talk about feudalism a little bit later. Um, 
religiously, ladies and gentlemen, dominated the institution that do and this is a uh, an institution that also dominates politics, economics, society, but also the very culture of Europe was the Catholic Church, and that's something that we're going to start to see uh, really break down and decline uh, in the late medieval period and late Middle Ages, um, and we're going to. Uh, in the early part of this class, the Catholic Church, Catholicism, and Christianity would be really, really important. Uh, but during this time, Catholic Church, the Pope, really important. The majority of Christians in Europe were Catholics. We don't have a lot of other denominations. Uh, Catholicism is synonymous with Christianity. There are some other denominations, but it's not really important. Like we have Greek, the Greek Orthodox in Russia. Um, but we don't have a widespread... Um, we don't have many different groups of uh, different uh, Christians. And we'll get into that with Protestantism, Protestantism and Martin Luther in chapter three. Okay, um, so let's kind of, let's, that's, we're going we're gonna to be talking about that. And um, we'll get started first with the Black Death uh, in late medieval times. Okay, um, I always put the learning objectives. I never really put them in the PowerPoints. I'm just doing it for this one to... Uh, to show you what our learning objectives are, I always put them in our calendar, and you all uh, have a calendar, and you can find the learning objectives there. Okay, here's kind of our outline. Again, I don't usually put this in my um, PowerPoints. I'm just doing it kind of to introduce it to y'all. Um, but the the chapter outline will always be in your calendar. Those calendars are vital, ladies and gentlemen. A breakdown of what goes on day by day, um, week by week. Okay. Um, so in this chapter, ladies and gentlemen, we have three main things we're going to be talking about. Now, this chapter, ladies and gentlemen, and this lecture is going to be really different from chapter from the rest of the chapters. Okay, this chapter I kind of uh, uh, model really closely after your reading in the textbook. When I start the Renaissance, it's going to be it, it'll be different from your textbook, um, and I'll get to that. But um, your this this is going to be a, a really close following of the reading ladies and gentlemen okay three main components of this chapter the black death the hundred years war and the decline of the church and we're going to discuss each vocab ladies and gentlemen super 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 important vocab is vital now in past years i have um uh really I've kind of had vocab quizzes is that were like you know 25 percent of your grade I'm not doing that this year because of distance learning. We're going to do something a little bit different. But vocabulary is really important for you all to know. And it's going to be really helpful for when we start our writing um, and discussions about the history. Um, understanding people, you know, dates, that those are understanding some of the key terms. Okay, that's going to be really important for us um, throughout the year. So vocab is important. Okay, and it's going to be very important for you all to know these words. All right. Here are the reading questions, okay? Now, I, for every chapter, and I'm going to discuss this again uh, with y'all um, when we meet, but every single chapter, I give you reading questions for homework. It's really important that you do these questions. Number one, it's going to help you understand the history. Number two, some of these questions might be very similar to some of the exam questions that we see throughout the year. And maybe even your AP exam questions. I've had a DBQ taken from some uh, DBQ question that we've seen that mirrored some of the reading questions that I gave. So these questions are really just important for y'all to go through, okay, um, and understand. And these are the ones for this chapter, okay. All right, I'm going to do a quick introduction of the Black Death, talk about it, and then we're probably going to stop this lecture. But the Black Death, ladies and gentlemen, is was a fundamental event that's really going to help, number one, facilitate the Renaissance and represent the end of medieval Europe. And there's going to be, uh, it's going to have tremendous effects on European society, economically, socially, politically, culturally, all the leads. All right. Um, so the Black Death. We, right now, uh, it is the year 2020. We are living through a pandemic, our own pandemic of COVID-19, which is really scary and it's really changed our lives dramatically um the black death was very similar it was on a gnarlier scale though um and we're going to talk about why uh, and why it was so impactful and so devastating to europe okay um so the black death okay now let's 
one of the big themes, ladies and gentlemen, of this class is cause and effect. That's something that you're really going to, and I'm going to discuss that when, when I introduce the class to y'all. I'm kind of doing this backward. I haven't met y'all uh, just yet. I'm, I'm recording this um, uh, before I meet y'all, but um, we will be discussing some of the main themes. Cause and effect is one of those main themes. What are the causes of the Black Death? What are some of the effects of the Black Death? Causes of the Renaissance, effects of the Renaissance, causes, causes of the Protestant Reformation, effects of the Protestant Reformation, causes of World War I, effects of World War uh, One. Uh, I think you all understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, cause and effect is super, super, super important. That's an important skill, an important um, theme within this class, okay? So we're going to be talking about the causes and effects of the Black Death. Now, Let's get a little context, a little background information about what was going on in Europe right when the plague hit and some preconditions to that, okay? Right before the Black Death uh, went down, Europe, okay, had doubled its population. Why? Well, they were making more food. They had some agricultural improvements that are going to be increasing food supply. If you have more food, you can have more people. However, their population started to grow a little too fast and their, their food production wasn't necessarily able to keep up with that. And so you, it was a very fragile balance, okay, where people just had enough to eat, all right? Now, if, if, if you are very, if you, you know, back then they don't have grocery stores. They just can't go to Costco and pick up 30 gallons of milk, okay, or 80 gummy packs, okay? I, I've done that before, man. I have not 30 gallons of milk, but I literally one time went to Costco and picked up this thing of 80 gummies. Did I need it? No. I only need about five, but when you go to Costco, you buy in bulk, all right? They can't buy in bulk during this time, all right? They, they can't do that, all right? So uh, during this time, ladies and gentlemen, th th there was a really it was food supply and population um, that was a very fragile balance, okay? Now, we're going to see with people just having enough to eat, all right, a crop failure, which, pr which is going to produce famine, aka now a lot of people don't have enough to eat. And that is going to produce a famine or starvation. Really important for us to understand, ladies and gentlemen, because if people are starving, that means they are malnourished. If they are malnourished, that means their immune systems are compromised. Their, their body is weakened and makes them susceptible to disease. Okay? And so we are going to see right when the Black Death is going to hit, a lot of people are malnourished and susceptible to disease. They are not healthy and they're not healthy. Their bodies are not healthy because they don't have enough to eat. All right. Um, so we are going to see the Black Death enter Europe through trading routes. It's going to originate okay, in Asia, come to Europe via trade routes via the Mediterranean. And we're going to look at a map and I'll show you that in a couple slides and how that kind of goes down. Okay, uh, the bubonic plague came on um, the fleas that were on rats. Rats would stow away or, you know, just kind of get into ships. Um, and obviously these ships are moving uh, across the world. Um, and um, we're going to see the, uh, the rats bring those fleas and bring the bubonic plague with them. And that is going to have uh, tremendous effects on Europe. Okay, um, now people are going to be blaming uh the Black Death, on many different theme, uh, things. And we're going to see a theme in this class. One of the groups that is going to be blamed for this will be the Jewish population, okay? But people are going to be blaming the Black Death on a, whole, on a whole bunch of different things. And we're going to see, when we discuss the Black Death, tons of different reactions. People are going to be, people are going to be taking the Black Death and what's going on around them in a lot of different ways, okay? Some people blamed... Uh, you know, the corruption of the atmosphere caused by earthquakes, that earthquakes, you know, opened up the earth and released this air and it started to kill people, okay? Um, uh, we're going to see the Jewish population be blamed. That's They're going to be scapegoats for this. That's going to be a major theme that we're going to see throughout this class, most notably in the Holocaust with Hitler in World War II. Um, and, and we're going to see that th throughout the class, okay? That's probably the most famous example of that. Um, and this is really important for y'all to, to think about. Um, one of the key questions that I ask y'all um, when I start this class is, why do we think that Europeans are going to blame the Jews? Why would they blame them? Why can't they blame, you know, chickens or like, you know, the horses over there? Well, one of the reasons why is Jews were a rival religion to Catholic Christian Europe. Okay, and so 
Catholic Christian Europe fears them, fears that they could, you know, they're, they're rivals to their power socially, economically, politically. So they're going to be blamed on them um, in order to, um, you know, take take power away from them, turn Europeans against them. Okay. Um, the Black Death was called the Black Death due to the way it discolored the human body. It, uh, it attacked certain areas of your body. I think it attacked the lymphatic system, I believe. Um, and um, and it turned and people would have these big kind of bulging uh, parts in their body that were black, okay? Um, and it discolored the human body. We're gonna see tons of different uh, remedies for this. And what's important about this is you are gonna be seeing Europeans react to the Black Death and really have no idea what is going on or how to solve it. Some people are gonna, uh, you know, uh, you know go outside and mix flowers with water and drink that and be like, I'm cured, and then die the next day. All right? Um, you're going to see Europeans panic because they don't know what's going on. They don't have relative information about um, medicine. They don't have a modern sense of medicine, sanitation, hygiene. None of that exists. They don't, they, they don't have, we don't have germ theory yet. This idea of vaccinations. And so Europeans are really going to, this is going to just, this is going to scare them. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about this from a religious perspective and how it hurts the church. But one of the key effects for this is that um, we're going to see, you know, Europeans go to their local priest, local um, church official and say, help us, help us, help us. And that church official won't be able to help them and that we're going to see people lose faith in religion lose faith faith in the church because of that you know they're going to go up to their priest and say help us help us and the priest is just going to die and they're going to be like oh okay and so we're going to see some huge religious secular changes because of that okay one of the things that actually did work was fumigating a room uh, using smoke to fumigate a room now why would that work was because well fleas that would get the fleas out of the house because the, the fleas, remember, are what transmitting the bacteria, okay? But most remedies did not work, okay? We're going to see people start to drink uh, uh, drink a lot. We're going to see people stop drinking a lot. And what I mean by drinking, alcohol, okay? We're going to see some people uh, being very pr promiscuous, aka having lots of sexual relations with other people, be, uh, living lives of reckless abandon, saying, it's the end of the world. I'm just going to do whatever I want, okay? We're going to see this... Black Death have, you know, uh, have a tremendous impact on the people, and people are going to be reacting in different ways. Okay, um, we're going to see some people just run away. Some people are like, "I'm out." Woo! Okay, and we're going to see nobles who could afford it try to seclude themselves, be like, run to the hills and just stay in the hills away from people. And we're going to see uh, uh, another uh, really um, important reaction is self-flagellation. We're going to see that amongst. Uh, uh, some of the religious groups, and we'll talk about flagellation, okay? Um, one of the ways that we know about how people were reacting and the human experiences during this was from Boccaccio and the Decameron. And this is a primary source, a source from that time, of, um, of the Black Death. And he wrote about the experiences. He wrote about like what uh, what was going on with people and what they were experiencing during this time. That's how we know. Okay, it's a primary source. He, he was he was writing about what he was seeing from that time period. Okay, and here are the flagellants. Okay, a religious group, and they believed that they were being punished by God. This is a religious um, response to the Black Death. And what they would do, it, it really uh, frightened a lot of Europeans. This group of people will kind of just walk through the cities and stuff like that and they'd be hitting themselves you know that they have sinned and that they you know they would be that they have sinned and they were hurting themselves um as some type of uh you know acknowledging their that they have done wrong and kind of trying to make things better with god okay and and, and this is a religious response to the black death some people right are gonna uh drink some people are going to run to the hills some people you know, are going to uh, do different things. This was definitely how many people from a religious point of view are going to respond to the Black Death. Okay, and as you can see, um, it was, it, it, in this uh, a picture from the Black Death, it, it had tremendous, it's going to have tremendous impacts on families, society, politics, economics. We're going to see just it have a tremendous impact upon uh, European society. 
Okay, we're gonna uh, end today. I think yeah, yeah. We're gonna end today um, talking a little bit about a map of how the Black Death and how quickly it spread. We live, we're living during our own pandemic of COVID right now, um, and it spread really quickly. Look, it, it started in almost one year, and it's gotten through the entire one year ago. I believe in like the fall or maybe early winter, maybe around like October from December. Um, but it spread really quickly. Take a look, ladies and gentlemen, about this map. What do you notice in the spread of the Black Death? I'll give you all a minute to kind of think about that, and you can pause the video and just think to yourself. All right. Hopefully you paused it and thought about it. Okay, so take a look at this map, and, it's, and we're going to look at a ton of maps this year. Maps are really important. Um, but take a look. Number one, how did the Black Death kind of get into Europe? All right. Well, you can see it coming from the Middle East, okay, from the east, kind of coming through the trade routes. And you can kind of see it make this big arc, okay, come on up here, kind of come on up here, and then kind of slowly make its way north, okay? The trade routes were key in how it got into Europe. Obviously, a major trade route is the Mediterranean Sea. That's one of the ways that you can get into um, you know, Spain. You can get into France. And so it came from the trade routes, comes into uh, Italy. Italy, we're going to talk about that with the Renaissance. Italy was a, a, an epicenter of trade and culture. It was, Italy was uh, where uh, West meets East. Um, it was kind of the crossroads. And... Uh, it's important for us to see that it's really going to uh, be entered through these major trading epicenters and ports of um, of Italy and um, southeastern Europe. Okay, right here. All right, and you can see it just it, how quickly it spreads, just in a matter of years, everywhere. Okay, and it's going to wipe out entire urban areas, wipe out villages, wipe out huge uh, uh, um, groups uh, of Europeans. Okay, here's some of the images of the plague. Woo! It's kind of gnarly. All right, the fleas, all right, with the rats. And you can see the discoloration it had on people. All right, pretty gnarly. Okay, a brutal disease. Very painful. Okay, very painful way of dying. I will stop here uh, for today. 